Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Our top story tonight, the student arrested for allegedly making threats to staff and students at Glover Middle School had his first court appearance yesterday. Today, we have learned some troubling new details that were revealed in court documents. Crime 2's Kyle Simchuk has the details tonight. According to court documents, this student was suspended about a month and a half ago when he threatened to kill a girl by stabbing her in the throat. Now, Spokane police say they are not aware of the school making any report to them about that incident. Instead, the vice principal called 911 this week when a citizen came in with a disturbing story. A contractor near the school said he was approached by a 13 year old boy on Tuesday who told him he was suspended because he buried a gun on the Glover School campus. According to court documents, the student claimed some men in their 20s were after him and he planned to shoot them if they showed up to the school. The boy also made comments about going after the school principal and vice principal. The contractor told police he saw the boy smoke marijuana and what appeared to be meth that day. After the encounter, he went to the school and reported his conversation to the vice principal. She called 911 and later told police she felt the student was capable of carrying out the threats. She told police the 13 year old also threatened to stab a teacher in the neck and pull out her veins. The student was arrested Wednesday and charged with felony harassment threats to kill. He had his first court appearance yesterday and remains in juvenile detention. We reached out to Spokane Public Schools for a comment. They said that law enforcement made the decision to have extra patrols here on campus on Wednesday. That's the day this student was arrested. He was taken into custody at his mother's house. Reporting in North Spokane, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Well, Crime Stoppers is offering a cash reward for anyone who can help solve the murder of a 16-year-old Meade High School student. Awar Apu was a sophomore when he was shot and killed at a birthday party in the Spokane Valley back in 2021. Now, investigators believe there are people out there who have information critical to solving this case. And they want to remind people that tipsters do not need to give their names in order to collect the cash reward. They can call the tip line, which is there at the bottom of your screen, 800 22 to tips or they can go to p3tips.com. There are seven billboards that have also gone up around Spokane to bring attention to this unsolved case. Well, today is National Gun Violence Awareness Day and there is renewed energy behind marking this day as a result of recent mass shootings. Today also kicks off Wear Orange Weekend where for the next three days, people all across the country will be dressed in orange t-shirts, bandanas or anything else they can find to make a statement. Why orange? Well, it's the color worn by hunters to be seen in the woods to protect themselves and others. It's crazy how us children see the problem with gun violence, but yet adults stand by and do nothing when adults have the more, more power. National Gun Violence Awareness Day started in June of 2013 after a young woman was shot on a playground in Chicago. When you look at what happened in Texas and you look at what happened in Buffalo, this is very important for it to be a consorted effort, a unified effort. People across the U.S. are participating in protests and walkouts, but the overwhelming majority of events have been organized by students and children. And there will be a rally against gun violence at the U.S. Pavilion in downtown Spokane for anyone looking to get involved locally in Wear Orange Weekend. It goes from noon until 1, and it will include student speakers. And organizers say don't forget to wear your orange. Well, according to the Firearm Injury and Research Program in Seattle, there are about 40,000 deaths due to guns every year in America, and about two-thirds of them are suicides. One-third are homicides. Dr. Laura Prater with UW Medicine is part of the Firearm Injury Research Program, and she says places where firearm supply is very high and gun laws are lax is where her team is seeing increased rates of firearm-related deaths. Right now, Washington state law requires universal background checks and extreme risk protection orders. That allows people to petition if they feel someone is demonstrating concerning behavior. Um, it's a civil order and it would remove the firearm temporarily for a period of one year. So Washington state had 877 gun related deaths just last year. The goal is to pass policy that helps protect vulnerable people and helps stop mass shootings such as the ones that we've just experienced. So if you would like more information on Washington gun laws and how they may be affecting you, just visit us online at crem.com. 
And a petition is circulating to revoke the National Rifle Association's tax-exempt status in wake of the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. Brandon Lewis from our National Verify team looks into whether the NRA really is a nonprofit. More than 21,000 people have signed a petition calling on the Internal Revenue Service to revoke the National Rifle Association's tax-exempt status. One tweet about its exemption has more than 56,000 likes. And Verify viewer Kimberly sent us this question. Hey, Verify, is the NRA tax-exempt? So, let's verify. Does the NRA have tax-exempt status? Our sources are the Internal Revenue Service and the NRA. The NRA is the nation's largest gun owners organization and is classified as a 501c4, or social welfare organization. The IRS says this status is for nonprofit groups that mostly exist to lobby or advocate for a cause. This is not the same thing as a charity. A charity can accept tax deductible donations, but is generally not allowed to lobby. A social welfare organization can't accept tax deductible donations, but is allowed to lobby. Both are considered nonprofits by the IRS, which means they're exempt from federal taxes. So, yes, the NRA does have tax exempt status. 501c4s are common and include nonprofits like AARP, the Miss America Organization, and some volunteer fire departments. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. All right, let's take a break from the headlines now and take things outside as we certainly enjoyed another nice day, but it was really humid outside, Jeremy, and I felt like I knew, I was noticing that because I knew that there is this kind of band of storms coming. Yeah, it was one of those ones where last night we were going, all right, are we getting rid of all that energy in the atmosphere? But as the sun came out today and it started to feel a little bit sticky, it was instantly a sign that yes, we are going to see that round of thunderstorms work its way through and we are seeing them now. A couple different bands now and we have seen quite a bit of convection already. We've seen this line of storms now progress a little bit farther to the east, now moving into the extreme far northeastern Washington, moving out of Deer Park now, but a lot of thunder and lightning. We've seen embedded within this line of storms some local small hail and strong wind gusts. Expect a little bit of outflow ahead of it. Let's say you're in Newport. You're going to watch that move through. This is eventually heading into North Idaho. A little bit farther down to the south, we have yet another band lifting into the Palouse. This thing's staying together pretty good, showing signs of a lot of convection. And as it hits those hills in the Palouse, we'll see more of that. So we'll be tracking both of those. Notice by 530 starting to move through by 730. They make their way into North Idaho. A couple of stray cells back behind it, but for the most part, it turns into more widespread showers and cooler temperatures as we get into Saturday overnight. Watch those showers continue as temperatures fall into the mid 50s. All right, Jeremy, thank you. Well, Art Fest is kicking off today and it runs all through the weekend. The well loved celebration of local artists was hosted virtually, of course, for the last two years because of the COVID pandemic, but it's back now and in a new location that you might recognize. Krem 2's Nicole Hernandez is out there right this minute to let us know the kind of art that we can expect to find. Hi, Nicole. Absolutely, Whitney. I mean, there is so much to see and so much to do here at Art Fest. We're here at the Mac Museum. Now, come with me. I want to walk some of these hallways with you while we've got this minute to chat about Art, Art, Art Fest happening here right now. Very, very exciting, of course, here to see just how many booths we have lined up. Again, like Whitney mentioned, the first time that we're here in person uh, since 2020, since, since the pandemic hit. So very exciting. It's been virtual for some time now, but take a look behind me here. You can see just how much different art you can get here. We've got some boots right next to us and some cute little shoes. We've got some paintings. We've got some photography, everything from ceramics to, to jewelry, really anything you can think of. 50 different booths here at the Mac Museum lawn. Take a look here. I'll, I'll have you guys pull up some information so you can see exactly when it's happening. It's going to be happening today, Saturday and Sunday. It's from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Friday and Saturday and then 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday again here at the Mac Museum on the front lawn. Of course, on top of all of the artist vendors, there's also going to be live music, food trucks, a beer garden and a kids area as well. So very exciting. You can see people already out here. Of course, if you're noticing a little bit, it's a little dark. It's a little, little muggy. Jeremy mentioned some of that rain coming through. It's a little bit wet here right now. It seems that the rain just passed a little bit through this spot, but everyone is still out here having a good time. So it shouldn't affect too much when it comes to festivities for the weekend. I'll send things back to you guys for now. Nicole, thank you very much. And it, it looks like from what at least we can see behind you, Nicole, if it does start to rain, it's not like it's going to be that 
big of a deal because you just kind of duck into one of the tents and look around at all the stuff, right? Exactly, it just gives the vendors more time with you, right? Because there's plenty to look at in each one of these tents. So just pick a tent, look, maybe buy something when it rains. There you go, perfect. Nicole, thank you very much. Well, still to come tonight, Gonzaga baseball opening up regional play in the NCAA tournament this morning. Travis Green is in next. He's going to get us all caught up on how the Bulldogs did.